So uh, with that, it's time to actually get started on our uh, technical program for today. So our first speakers are Santiago Pontaroli and Dimitri Beschev from the wilds of Argentina and Miami. Today's first talk was the, actually the highest rated submission by our program committee. Uh, we don't often hear about Latin American threats. It's, it's kind of an underreported space. And we were really excited to hear about some actors that we either haven't heard about much in the past or haven't heard about at all. So we're intrigued to hear about the attack techniques being leveraged by these groups and how they might be different from the ones that we're used to. So please welcome to the stage, Santiago and Dimitri. Big green button. Which one is the big green? Okay. Thank you. So hello, everyone. Um, should I say buenos dias? Because we're going to speak about Latin America. Uh, for us, it's a big privilege to be here with you. Thank you for having us. And I have also a privilege to introduce to my colleague and my friend Santiago Ponteroli, who's senior security researcher. Santi. Thank you, Dima. Uh, buenos dias. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. I know last night or last evening uh, you had some drinks. So thank you for waking up. Um, so I'm presenting here with uh, Dimitri Pestushev. He is the director of the Global Research Analysis Team for Latin America. And we've been working together for nine years. So we know each other really well. And we are going to speak about what we work every day. So. Thank you again for being here, and let's start with the presentation. So, has anyone been here before? One, one in the room. You need to travel here. This is beautiful. Two. Two, two people. Yeah, nice. So, this is Foz do Iguazu, or Cataratas do Iguazu, or Iguazu Waterfalls. Um, so, Iguazu comes from the name I, or Y, that means uh, big, and Wazu from Guarani, that means uh, water. So, big water. It was Pretty simple name. So we have these beautiful landscapes in Latin America, but we also have some conflicts. If you see this picture, you wouldn't imagine uh, the administration or George W. Bush saying that this is a conflict zone, that there are terrorist groups operating here, that there are very uh, a lot of criminal activities going on. And this is a conflict zone mainly because of the uh, of the triple frontier. You have Argentina, you have Brazil, and you have Paraguay, sharing pretty much a single point that crosses over this waterfall. So what we are going to speak about is the other side of the coin, the virtual side. Because as we see, Latin America is a beautiful place, but we also have some cyber espionage operations that uh, do not uh, get the attention that we think they, they should. So knowing the culture, knowing the context is important, as we mentioned yesterday in several talks, uh, the importance of storytelling, the importance of, of knowing what, who, and where uh, are doing these operations. And we are going to speak about several groups. I'm going to start with, with one that is uh, from the bottom of our hearts, and this is uh, Machete. Yeah, so probably you heard a lot about Machete, right? At least at some conferences. Uh, but in reality, everything you have heard, it's not the full picture. I found Machete by myself before EDR existed, XDR, and all those uh, telemetries we have nowadays. It was a very interesting story when one of the generals, militaries from Ecuador called and told that he had a trip to China, and he was like freaking out, thinking that his machine was infected. I went to the to work with his machine. I just sat down and I worked with his machine, and I found actually machete. I didn't know it was machete. I didn't find anything Chinese, but something very suspicious, like a presentation on PPTX with an embedded file, which basically in the end ended up in this executable. So Machete is also known originally. Machete, this is the name, marketing name I put to this thing. But originally it was called as Arcantos Life Control. And we're gonna see that later, also Ragua. So here is a, one of the example of those documents they also used and it exists 
uh, at least since 2010, we found also traces leading to mobile implants. Imagine even to, you remember BlackBerry when people use those mobile devices? Yeah. They right. had implants for that BlackBerry as well, for, the same as for Android. And of course, they rely a lot in uh, social engineering. So, Santi? So, we found Machete during 2014, but actually their operations go as far back as 2010. Uh, I always make fun, uh, we, we laugh about this, that we had the, the brightest idea of presenting Machete in Colombia, in Cartagena. Uh, but after that presentation, of course, Machete went uh, underground for a couple of years. We didn't see any more of their operations. Then in 2016, 2017, we saw some new samples. We saw they were consolidating their operations. They were starting all over. So it was uh, a different set of malware, a different infrastructure. It was everything done from scratch. Then we saw in 2019 also using uh, human intelligence. So they were using documents that they would steal from uh, victims. So these were secret documents that they would steal, for example, from embassies. and use those documents as a lure to catch new victims. So for example, the documents, uh, if you would see the, the slide before, was about, for example, about a coup in Venezuela. So at the bottom of the document, it says uh, Chavez vive or Chavez is alive. Uh, so they would use this type of documents to get new victims, uh, documents that no one had seen before. This is a, a very targeted spear phishing. Finally, yes, thank you, Santi. Finally, yeah, during the pandemic, we thought, OK, Machete, it's gone. Because uh, it literally, we brought so much, let's say, attention to them that they had a like a very busy time, you know, even the one of the operators who used to be an active military personnel, he got transferred inside of the military unit to something like uh, construction or something like that. Until in 2020, 2021, uh, they just got back again. It was right inside of the pandemic. The original name of the operation they put it was COVID-19. Then they changed it to Icaro. And what was about? about targeting the office of general prosecutor office in Ecuador. Why? Because the ex-president, one of the ex-presidents of the of Ecuador, he got in problems and troubles and he was called basically to get to the court and to respond, you know, to the justice. So basically Machete from a military unit ended up in mercenaries. Now they're still alive and kicking and they work for money. Uh, for this operation they got payment in uh, cryptocurrencies and what they did they attacked the computer of the secretary of the general prosecutor office who led the case they stole the information those screenshots are published on a website fake website built by machete to also to, to like set up a fake news portal news portal to make people believe that there is injustice like you know unjust full treatment to the ex-president and you see here is even the script about the visitors when people visit the, the portal it says like you know the number of visitors like it's I don't know thousands of people in reality it was just fake so those I mean these uh, pictures you can see here it's taken by machete not by us it's not from the evidences it's um basically by, by them. So the purpose of this presentation is to let you know about the context, right? What's going on? And also to show how can we map it, how can we put it to transfer it into the um, MITRE ATT&CK framework TTPs, right? Some of them, like Machete, it's already available public, but still we work with those existed uh, TTPs available on the, in the internet. And also we, uh, let's say, try to enrich it with the information we have, or, or just to show you something like very interesting. And it's, uh, we usually put it like in highlight in yellow, as you can see here. One of the very important things here, you can see the exfiltration. One of the exfiltration methods it used, it was not only FTP, uh, but also a special USB device. Why we say special? Because that special USB device was linked and hard coded in the code by the serial number. What it means? air gap networks where there's no internet still were affected because spies, people, let's say other personnel working in the affected in the victims facilities. And we should remember between the victims, we had embassies, military units, police forces, um, prison systems and so on. So someone also like those victims had a, let's say like intruders or 
you know, people like spies using basically that USBs. They inserted those USBs without doing anything. The information was copied automatically to the USB, and that's it. Santi, do you have anything to add here? Yeah, I remember the first campaign that we, we so much it uh, using, for example, uh, pornographic images, but also they were using, for example, the Art of War ebook. So it was kind of a, <laughs> you know, a shotgun approach, like maybe you want to read a very, you know, deep book, or maybe you just want some pornography, it's fine. But after that, in 2016, 2017, they started using these uh, stolen documents. So Machete evolved. We've seen like a, a clear evolution, um, but also the name Icarus comes from the C2 server. Actually, they would embed the credentials in their malware. So everything was custom. For each operation, they had, a, a, let's say, a Dropbox or a, or a Drop server. Uh, after that, everything was burned and a new operation was created. Yes, and that is a screenshot of one of those uh, Arcantos live control. You remember, they also had a feature, special feature to spy on such a called offline conversation. You know, like, hey, I want to, Santi, can we speak? Yeah, sure, but, you know, face to face. Yeah. Okay, and we are here, let's say, but the computer is on, or my mobile device is on, and you can see they were, they had th those features like uh, audio, geolocation, video, webcam, and so on. So it was like a full, it is actually a full operational like framework to spy on whoever. And right now it's, uh, it's still running. And they also rely a lot on open source. And for example, for video, let's say like conferencing, they use Jitsi, you know, Jitsi thing. So it's, uh, this is something also they like it very much. Blind Eagle. Blind Eagle. This was the best picture I could find of a Blind Eagle. I'm for, sorry for this. <laughs> like, uh, I really tried to do some memes or some, you know. Uh, so Blind Eagle, now that we're speaking about Colombia, also is uh, one of these APTs. And I would call it a, a nation state. I mean, some of the other uh, companies have called this a kind of a mercenary or financially motivated group. But actually, I, I don't think so because of the targets and the way they operate. Um, so I think there are very um, important things about Blind Eagle. One of those is thank you, Jose Lillo, for, for mapping it. <laughs> but also beyond that is that they use a bunch of different uh, RATs, remote access trojans. And between those, we could find, for example, Projector RAT, or some RATs that are made in Latin America, and also some phishing emails, for example, from DIAN. DIAN is a uh, Departamento de Impuestos, Aduanas de Colombia, that's the tax and, and customs department from Colombia. So they are using very specific phishing documents, not as specific as Machete, but they are targeting pretty much the same kind of, uh, let's say, of entities, embassies, military uh, services, uh, anything that has uh, strategic uh, relevance to their operations. Again, we're adding context, but also we thought it would be uh, good for you to have also the TTPs. So it's not only the context you have, you know, or mappings as well, and you can do something with it. <laughs> so thanks. Um, for Blind Eagle, uh, I was checking the mapping that there is available on, on the Mitro Attack website, and I, I had a problem mapping just one TTP that was related to network uh, infrastructure. So when Blind Eagle is developing resources, they would um, hack routers or modems, but they won't use it as an execution phase or they won't use it to deploy anything. It's just developing the resource and use it later for uh, maybe proxifying the connection or as a multi-proxy or something like that. But it's actually resource development and I couldn't find this exact uh, TTP in, in MITRE. Other than that, we added some other TTPs and as you can see, the discovery uh, tactic is marked with an asterisk. And this is pretty common with uh, all the threat actors that we're going to show here. Latin American threat actors are really noisy, really, really noisy. The discovery phase is uh, wow, amazing. I mean, I, I, I would need another slide just to show everything. Correct. So puppeteers, um, this dates back to 2015, 2016. We are going to present about puppeteers uh, at a security conference in Tenerife. Uh, one week before, we saw the report uh, that uh, Citizen Lab published, and we thought, okay, we cannot 
talk about this anymore. So we, we publish a different threat actor that we will talk about later. But nevertheless, uh, puppeteers is one of those groups operating in Latin America that you should be uh, aware of because they are mercenaries. They target uh, journalists, they target opposition, they target uh, prosecutors. So they target high profile victims, not entities, but persons, people. Um, I remember the first sample that we saw was using uh, Alien Spy, I think, uh, protected with Alatori, uh, a commercial uh, packer. And when you see the email, uh, now Dima will talk about this, but uh, they would ask you like, do not read this email on your phone. Please open it on your desktop computer and things like that, you know, <laughs> of course. Right, so uh, yeah, puppeteers, it's interesting because they also, the person behind his nickname is he's known, it's El Russo, like the Russian, but he's, uh, he's not the Russian. <laughs> so here is also one example of those like real examples. What happened? Basically, the guys behind this campaign, it's a group of uh, threat actors, uh, one of them, he studied like psychological warfare when he was uh, like also in the military, you know, career. So now it's a mercenary thing and they're also targeting people. In this case, in this particular case, first, they infected the president of Ecuador's daughter. Then from her email, they went to the president of the Ecuador and they got like, you know, his uh, communications completely on. Again. That is not the only one victim. Between the victims, we saw journalists protected by the, the State Department of the United States. Boom, infected. People who were in a position, boom, infected. And then, you know, like working with the victims, uh, I mean, working with them as persons, it was also very interesting because they, they show, like, I think I'm infected. Okay, show me your email. Like, okay, I have a Gmail. Okay, log in, boom. And then, like, you see those emails and they say, like, I tried to I had tried to open the file, but it didn't work. Can you send it again? Man. <laughs> like how many times did you click on that thing? You know? So Puppeteer uh, used also something very interesting. For the exfiltration, for the command and control exfiltration, they use a multi-hop proxy. How it works? They wanted also to bring a false flag operation. Basically, first they infected some of network devices of a military unit of Ecuador. It's a military unit and it's a communication like unit, like in charge of you know communications. And they basically use it as a first step. You know, like first, so any like incident responder, like with you know like uh, not that like high expertise would say, look, the military of Ecuador targeting his own president. Like, it's a shame. It's a shame you get to go to the jail. And here, as you see, the, the compromised webcam and also their uh, router and stuff like that. And Pisco Gonçalves, Sanchez. <laughs> so uh, Dima got to name Machete, and I got to name this one, Pisco. If you know that ring, uh, guilty as charged. So I, I named this one after being in Chile and Peru. Disco Gone Sour, it's a, it's a campaign that we saw several years ago. Uh, and it was happening at the same time as uh, some cyber drill exercise done by the Southern Command. So we saw the same TTPs that this cyber drill. So they were teaching some uh, military units about uh, doing offensive operations. These offensive operations use uh, some pretty common frameworks, such as PowerShell Empire and things like that. So at the same time, or after this cyber drill finished, uh, it seems the teams wanted to put it to use. So uh, we saw this operation, and if you look at these documents, it's uh, targeting, targeting uh, a system developer that has access to the Ministry of Defense of Chile. So actually, they weren't targeting directly the Ministry of Defense, but indirectly by using one of their uh, developers. Yeah, that's correct. So all the TTPs are new, so the, we we don't we didn't highlight anything on this one, but we can hope we can share it. I don't know if it's going to make it to the Mitre attack website, but nevertheless, we will share the JSON files of, of all the attack uh, navigators uh, that we did. So we 
Exactly, because I think nobody knows about uh, Piscogon Sour attack at all, right? Probably you heard about the previous one, but about this one, not. So here you have also these so fresh things. Now there is another group, because we have heard like a lot of military, 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 but now we, we're, we're going to speak about initial access groups, right? And that is something uh, we have uh, forecasted years ago. And we see it today, right? Even like groups like Conti, we just saw them on the news, basically also using relying on somebody else, you know, to get access. So Latin America also has those guys, you know, and one of them is Poseidon. Santi, what can you tell us about well, Poseidon, please? If you remember, I told you that we were going to present about Puppeteer at Tenerife and we couldn't do it. Well, we had Poseidon <laughs> also at the same time. Uh, and actually, Poseidon is, uh, is also a mercenary group, but this different from Puppeteer. Why is that? Because Poseidon presents itself as a penetration testing company. So it goes to the customer, it offers, uh, offers the services. But once it's inside the network, once it, it has access to the customer files and private information, uh, it starts to blackmail the customer. And it offers that information to the competition. And also, they have like a, another leg of their operation that is uh, called financial forecasting services. So if your company is on the stock market, of course, if you have private information of the company, I have the best forecasting system ever because I know everything about you. So they would sell this service as well. So one of the, let's say, uh, TTPs that we can highlight uh, for Poseidon is the use of digital certificates, but also again uh, for the discovery phase. I remember they have this um, huge file that was called Coleta SQL or uh, information gathering tool that was like 16 megabytes. So that tool is noisy as hell. It just tries to get information from every possible product that Microsoft ever did, starting from Windows like 3.11. So after this, they would get all that information and exfiltrate it. But uh, again, it's not a mercenary group like Puppeteer. It's uh, more of a shady business. It's like unrequested, you know, Pentas. And then, Sanjay, <laughs> look what I found. Yeah. You want me to keep it in secret now? You want to pay? Yeah. You better pay. <laughs> so, but Sanjay, what can you tell us about Satellite Link? Oh, well, um, we were going to talk about different groups as well. Uh, there's going to be a mention about satellite Turla, but in the case of Poseidon, the command and control server was actually, and, and we, we tried to sinkhole a couple of the domains that we were using for exfiltration, and we found one that was on a ship in the middle of the ocean, so it was a hijack satellite collection, uh, connection. So you can see that it was pretty difficult to track these guys, um, and I remember when we did this, uh, the, the first presentation of Poseidon, I used a phrase, I don't know if you saw the movie uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, so life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop once in a while, you could miss it. The same is for Poseidon. If you miss it, that's it. You will never find it again. And we, we were just joking, like, uh, okay, you got to take down that C2 like yeah. sh and ship, you know, like yeah. how to take it down. You know? Another one, Saguaro. Saguaro comes from Mexico. It's confirmed. They also, they targeted mostly Mexico, but also many other countries. Comparing, you know, Mexico with like 3 million victims to others, let's say tens of thousands, tens of thousands, like 1%, you know, but still that was like a huge, huge thing. So they targeted companies um, stealing RDP accesses, uh, VPN connections, certificates, email accesses, mobile things, all sorts of, you know, everything, everything they could steal. And then it's about commercialization, of course. So here uh, also with Saguaro or something interesting, you see sometimes when they think about RDP and mapping those things, we say, okay, initial access, I don't know, right? But they never use those accesses. They just, they use it to resell it. So it's RDP in this case, it's like uh, what it should be like impact resale of RDP, I don't yeah. know, it's like, or st stealing like BTC wallets. Yeah, that is the impact, but how can we put it in the navigator? So it's like, uh, you know, it's financial actually impact, right? Well, and then we have uh, global threat actors operating in Latin America. So uh, this is this is my main time. I, I, I try to, to add at least one. Uh, <laughs> So yes, you have some operations with uh, with Lazarus, and we have a particular one that we're going to, to speak about. Uh, 
so this was uh, like two or three years ago. Uh, new, they were targeting the Bank of Chile, or Banco de Chile, and Red it's Bank. Public, it's public. Yeah, music. this is public. Yeah, That's and, why and, we, and, I'm not ashamed of anyone here. <laughs> Everything yeah. has been rehearsed. <laughs> so uh, this operation was uh, pretty known by Lazarus, but they were targeting Chile and Mexico at the time. So the, this was um, unexpected for, for such a group that has so many aliases and has done so many operations. But with the Banco de Chile, uh, what was interesting was the, the resource development phase and the reconnaissance phase. So they would take a lot of time to find the right victim to start the spear phishing attack. It's not like Machete or Poseidon that they use as secret documents to lure their victims. They just find the right guy. And yes. Dimas wanted to speak about that. Yeah, and that was through LinkedIn, of course. So basically, they contact one guy and they said, hey, do you want your dream job? You know, like working for a foreign company? Sure, yes. So just get our special security application. You get to install it and run. It will enable your VPN connection to our servers. And that is the screenshot of this, um, you know, uh, thing and the code, of course. It executed malicious code and goodbye. And then we have, finally, we get to pronounce Mishta again. So we have TA505. This is also a financially motivated actor. Um, I think that, that the most interesting thing about TA505 is the, the living of the land binary usage and also their campaigns related to CLOP and CLOP leaks. So we highlighted this, and this was the only group that we could uh, map with, uh, with an impact. So I think there is something also that for Latin American threat actors, we, we couldn't find, I still don't know why, but it's open for conversation. So if you need to, to do a purple team engagement or, or you need to emulate uh, TA505, LOLBAS is your friend. Then cognitive biases, just to wrap up our presentation, of course, uh, survivorship bias uh, that we also, that we always seen this, this things doesn't mean that it's going to happen every single time the same as the monte carlo or the gamblers fallacy please hold us accountable of what have we done here and check our, our jasons last but not least you see we don't have enough time to present you about everything what is happening in latin america so things like satellite turla targeting chile very interesting thing is not here dar tequila añejo is not here Ransomware targeting hospitals. Now everybody is thinking, okay, the, you know, it's it's now, but it's not now. First, Brazilian started with that. Had started years ago. Expand. We're gonna maybe like if we invite it next time or yeah. if we accept it, we'll next present year. all of them. <laughs> and something else, also uh, Green Deer, also very interesting campaign, super unknown yet. Also, it's an outsourced campaign relying on a looks to be a Chinese threat actor targeting Latin America on the name, the country, of, one of the countries of Latin America on the name of the another country, which got very much upset because of a political decision, you know, like playing all those things. And I'm a sucker for quotes, and I love this one because this is why, what I remind myself uh, before working on our report. Tell me what you know, then tell me what you don't know. And this, for me, is the most important thing. We know a lot about uh, Latin American threat actors, but of course, we don't know what you know. We don't know the gaps in our knowledge. So again, hold us accountable of, of everything we said here. Check the JSON files. and. Thank you for your time and attention. Yeah, thank you very much. And one more thing, one more thing, the last thing. Machete also goes ransomware. The, I don't know for what, they also use like an open source project uh, based on Python, it's on GitHub. And um, I don't know if, if they're gonna use it for, let's say like a smoke screen, or it's like diversification of business, <laughs> who knows. But Emerging it's market. Something. Yes, and thank you, thank you very much again. Thank you. Thank you. I'm getting in the middle. Oh, no. No, thank, you. oh thank, you. thank you so much. And we really look forward to that. And like I said, yesterday it was amazing. We had a couple of code drops. Today yeah. we're getting Intel drops. So fantastic. Thank you for really, you know, being a you know great contributor to the community. We have time for a couple questions. And I wanted to start with one that we got from online that was really awesome. Barry Anderson, thank you. Uh, the question was, um, since, you know, as you mentioned, some you know governments actually have threat actors fund themselves. Do you think that you know complicates or kind of muddles the the separation between economic operations and nation state activity? Like that nexus, how how do you kind of perceive that? 
Well, Latin America, it's always about improvisation. And <laughs> sometimes it's chaos. Like, what's the plan? We'll see. It's, uh, it's like that's the difference be between like soccer players, you know, in Europe. Okay, this is the plan, like Germany team, like we're going to attack this. And, and in Latin America, it's like, okay, let's go and play. Enjoy it, guys. Woohoo! Jogo bonito. <laughs> <laughs> so it's same. It is very that. difficult for us to, to separate financial threat actors from uh, APTs. That fine line. For us, it's it's so hard because sometimes these are financially motivated actors, but also at the same time, if they find something interesting, they would take it just as a leverage for the next victim. So uh, I, I don't know. For the moment, the answer is unknown. It gets back to what you said earlier about context, too. Yeah. You really have to immerse yourself in understanding you know, what's the yeah. motivation, what's the intent. Um, I see all, a couple really eager faces, so I definitely want to open it up to the audience here if there's anyone that has a oh, prayer. Um, okay, so on the Ecuador, when the, the hopping into the military thing was really interesting, I just want to know, when you were dealing with that situation, so you had this high-level breach with the president, and then you have it going to the military, how forthcoming were the various departments that handle those key security problems in Ecuador cooperating with you, especially once you were able to show hate? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's uh, again Latin America. It's about people. It's humans. It's talking. It's uh, you have your connections. You just speak to the people and you say you got hacked. You see, um, and then and they also share with you like, oh, now I know why. Like that day, that month, they did those like stupidity against. <laughs> like oh, okay, we got the you know the the reason. So yeah, it's basically always like. You know, just yeah, and, and it also that that case of the camera that was publicly accessible. So we had that MicroTik router with default credentials, but we didn't log in. Just by using the same IP and a different port, it was just you know the battalion of Ecuador having their monitoring system wide open for the internet. That, that's not cool as well. So of course we would inform them. <laughs> Yesterday we had a Speto. Today Pisco. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you too. Thank, Thank you, you very much.